Hey, it's Pamela. Welcome to my channel. Today, I have a bit of a spooky story for you guys, and I have several of these. So if it's something that you'd like to hear more of, give me a thumbs up and subscribe while you're at it, especially if you're watching my videos a lot. If you find that you're returning to my channel, just hit subscribe, ring the bell. I do live in a haunted house, and I will start to tell those stories probably within the next few months but first this story is about an abandoned house that i used to visit when i was a teenager this was back in the early 2000s one of my friends had a car and we would go around driving around and i'm assuming this is how he discovered this place i remember one night he came over and he was telling us about an abandoned house that he found in caledon and let me give a bit of a description about it it was north of Old School Road. I can't remember what the other road was. So you would go up the driveway and there were, I remember there were some trees and then the house was there. Right beside it, there was an apiary. There was a big tree right beside it. So trees, house, apiary, huge tree. And then further back, there was, I think, a silo and then there was i don't want to call it a barn it was more like a storage area with i think there's tractors and stuff in it but this place was completely abandoned back then we weren't really thinking about trespassing because when you're a teenager you don't think about that stuff you're just like cool this is really cool abandoned house let's go we we're all excited freaking each other out and i remember getting there and it was there's just kind of a bit of an ominous feel to it. And I remember we were scared to go in. So the first night we were kind of scaring each other and we did not make it through the entire house because it was really freaky. The basement was completely flooded. There was a giant hole in the floor somewhere. We weren't thinking about flooded basement, rotting floor we could possibly fall through. After that, we visited this place several times and I remember one time there was groups of other people going inside and I think this is when we built up the courage to actually walk around. When you went into this place, you had this extremely eerie feeling. The scary thing that happened, I'm progressing towards it and it's one of the last times I ever went to this place, but when we were discovering it and walking through it, there was just that ominous feeling. This is probably the first strange thing. First time we went during the day is when we discovered that there was the apiary beside the house and we kind of went over to it and we're looking around. There was hundreds and hundreds of dead bees just blanketing the ground out of nowhere an overwhelming wave of this scent when me and my friend were the only two standing in there just came over us and we were gagging. It was one of the most disgusting things that I've ever smelled but that smell was not present when our other friends were there and I find that really strange because there were no sudden gusts of wind and it's also a scent that we had never smelled there before and we had at this point we had been there several times and also as we were standing there it's like the scent was getting worse and worse and worse I can't explain that but then I can't how is the scent intensifying and why wasn't it present when our other friends were standing there with us we went into the house after this and kind of made the rounds but every Every single time we went into this house, it was terrifying and we had been here so many times. You figured that we would have lost that initial fear, but it never really went away. Anyway, now on to the weirder stories. I'm gonna tell this part first because this was actually the last time I went there. I was hanging out with the friend who had discovered the place. As soon as we turned into the driveway, the windows fogged with only two people in the car and it not being winter. I don't understand how this can happen. It was getting foggier and foggier as we drove up. And because he had zero visibility, he had to drive up and somehow turn around. And at this point, we were freaked out. We did not want to get out of the car. And as soon as we turned out of the driveway, the windows cleared. I don't know how you can explain that. I've never had this happen any time. Like I understand when you're having a conversation, the windows start to fog, but they don't just instantly fog. If you guys can explain this, let me know. But keep in mind, it wasn't the dead of winter. So it wasn't freezing cold outside. There were only two people in the car and we were talking the entire way there. The windows weren't fogging up. And as soon as we turned into the driveway, fogged windows. 
I can't explain that. I don't know if he returned, but it was the last time that I ever went there. So the second last time, it was with two other friends. One of them had never been to this place and didn't know any of the stories. We just wanted a place where we knew we could sit and not really be disturbed because we didn't want to go to a parking lot and we kind of wanted to sit in the dark because that's what we like to do. I don't know. So we went to the abandoned house. Caledon is a lot more developed now. Back then, it was a lot of, I want to say, farm land. It wasn't very residential. There wasn't any neighbors nearby. Basically, no one would notice that you're there if you're sitting in a car with your lights off. We were sitting there and it was so dark and we were just having a conversation and we weren't freaking ourselves out or anything. But I started to feel weird. And I remember looking out the passenger window and it felt like someone was staring in at me. But it was just completely black. Oddly, I'd like I felt like there was pressure on the window. I was kind of getting distracted by it. And I didn't mention what... I was feeling at this point, but the pressure from the window and that feeling would not go away. I started getting the pressure in my head, then I started feeling like I couldn't breathe and my vision was getting cloudy. You can get the sensation of what I felt. You press down on, I guess it's an artery about there. If you do that, you start to feel what I was feeling in my head. There was nothing around my neck, nothing that could cause this feeling, and I still felt like there was something staring in at me through the window. And this feeling was getting worse, and I remember I kept looking out the passenger window just thinking, what is happening? What is going on? My friends were completely unaware of what I was feeling, and I just remember being like, guys, we have to leave. They were like, what? No, we, we haven't been here that long. We're having fun. And I was like, no, guys, like, I can't see. I can't breathe. I feel weird. We have to go. My friend was like, oh, okay, let's go. As he was driving down the driveway, the feeling started to dissipate. And as soon as he drove off the driveway, the feeling went away. But I still felt a little funny. And that's not something that I've really experienced to that degree since. The only other place that I've kind of felt that feeling was at the Whaley House in San Diego. I don't know if you guys have been there, but basically you go in the doorway and then there's the little general store area and you might feel something around your neck. We did get a backing story from a group of people one night that we had gone there. Apparently a group of people had rented this house out and they completely trashed it to the point where the owners couldn't rent it out anymore and they just left it like that. I guess the damage was too bad and it would have been too expensive to renovate it and fix it up, but I can't get over the feeling that I think something terrible happened there. Because this was early 2000s, I don't think this place exists anymore. Condemning this old house and building a new one, it's not gonna take this energy away. It's always gonna be there unless you have a professional to fully cleanse it away. But if if there is a new house on this property, if there is someone living on that property today, I'm really curious to know if they're experiencing crazy things like I did when I used to go there when I was a teenager. That's my story. I have a lot more. I had weird things happen in my old apartment and I think those are going to be the next stories that I tell you about because some weird things were happening in that house. And I had also experienced something absolutely terrifying. But if you'd like to hear those stories, just say the word and I will be more than happy to share them. As for the stories in the house that I live in, I don't want to tell those from inside this house. So I'm going to have to find a location where I can film those to share those because so much has happened in this house that I cannot explain. I feel like this stuff just follows me around. I don't know. I really do believe that the veil is thinner for some people and it's like spirits or higher dimensional beings can pick out who can sense them because it's like you have a light over your head just saying talk to me, talk to me. It's like they know who can sense them and I feel like those who experience the paranormal experience it all the time. I can tell you guys about going to the Whaley house too if you'd like to hear that. It's been years since I've been there and I just remember it being a really freaky place and experiencing the thing around my neck again in another location was kind of interesting. Anyway, I'm going to end this video now. Thanks for watching.